Hello everyone, welcome back to Reload Revelation, the show where we break down some gear, talk about the news, and overall, have a good time. I'm your host, Ryan Solson. Thank you so much for tuning in again. If you like this content, do me a favor. Subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. Now let's get into it. So one of the most popular things kind of rolling around social media right now is the chief of the technology division of the ATF struggling to get a Glock apart. Not not the best look for your hit piece on lower 80% builds, which that's what the whole video was on. And for people that don't know what lower 80% builds are, people sell you these Glock frames and you just have to finish putting the holes in for the trigger assembly. And the reason why they don't want you to do this, the ATF, is because, well, then they can't regulate it because it's not technically a firearm as of this moment. That's one of the things. The Second Amendment covers privately owned and privately made firearms. You don't have to regulate those. You can build a firearm from scratch. Is it going to be janky? Well, it depends on your skills. I know if I built it, yeah, it would be a, a tube. Ew. There's no penalties to making your own firearm. But it's just kind of funny to think about. Like with your hip piece, you'd think that maybe, I don't know, you'd practice a couple times before taking it apart on camera. Unless they didn't have, I mean, but if you're dealing with Glocks, which are one of the number one most common handguns in use, you think that you would have some sort of basic knowledge to taking them apart. And a handgun, it's not that hard to take apart. Most times you have, you know, your receiver and your slide. That's kind of the main two big parts. So the fact that you couldn't do that, well, it sounds like a you problem, if you're asking me. Uh, but speaking of the ATF, the director, Steven Dettelbach, the current regime leader of the ATF, went on to have an interview and the reason why they're having trouble tracking down these criminals with the guns is because they don't have access to a national registry. And I'm just gonna let that sink in for a second. So let's talk about this, a federal registry. Okay, what would that mean? That means is that with every purchase of a firearm, your name is put on a national list with all the information in case something happens. It's unconstitutional because one, you don't get to know what I own, and two, if something were to happen, in this case, since Michigan passed these red flag laws, someone can look my name up on a registry and go, oh, oh, you have that many? Well, that's a problem. We can't have that. And then try and seize them. It's a slippery slope to the point where if you regulate how many people can buy, well, you're just one step closer to taking them all away, which they're just jumping a few steps <laughs> with that. ATF, once again, as well as every other anti-gun lobby group, they're targeting the wrong people. And yes, pun intended. Uh, criminals will never follow the gun laws. Their problem is that they can't find the serial numbers. Okay, yeah, it, it's a blatant problem. However, is it the fact that they got these guns by illicit means, i.e. either stealing them or making them, but if they're already a felon, they're already breaking the law as is. They can't own a firearm. They can't vote. They can't do a lot of things if you're a convicted felon. So is it the problem, the tool that is used to protect my family, myself against others? Or is it the person behind that tool that'll do great harm to people? Without serial numbers, yeah, you ain't gonna track nothing, which is why criminals and gang members and all these people like to use them because they're harder to track with a crime. So no, you're not gonna get a national registry. We're not gonna register our firearms because that's part of our constitutional right to keep and bear arms against a tyrannical government. That's stepping towards tyranny. We don't want that. We just wanna protect ourselves and our family in case of any evildoers that try to do harm to our families. With the extensive efforts involving tracking these original purchasers, of these firearms. So he's struggling to find the original purchasers of these firearms because there's no national registry. My guy, do you realize what you just said? You just admitted that most guns used in violent crimes are gained by illicit means. So you know the fact that it's not the law-abiding citizens that have the weapons. It's the fact that you just wanna take them away from us. So now let's talk about something that the ATF definitely doesn't want you to have. 
that they can control and do control. And we have one here because I like breaking the rules. <laughs> so, what we got today is the RPG Model 2, or RPG 2. A lot of people can recognize this from various video games and whatnot. However, this one's a little bit different than what people have seen. Most people have seen the RPG 7, which is a more modern version of it. Uh, it's got two grips instead of one, and it's a little bit more, dare I say, more modern. But this one was used way back in the Vietnam War. Its maximum range was about 200 meters or 220 yards, which wasn't too bad for that time. Came with, you got your rocket propelled grenade. On the other end, it's got two sling mounts to mount a sling into it. The firing mechanism is very simple. Uh, it's a dummy rocket, so we'll you click down that hammer. That would arm the firing mechanism. It would hit the firing pin, send the rocket out, and there you go. So the capture tag is what was put on this to show that we got it from the enemy back in Vietnam, which is pretty cool. You don't usually see these. Obviously, the writing on it has been pretty much torn to shreds, but it's a very nice little piece of history with that. Arm the sights. I mean, <laughs> it was pretty primitive for the time. It was held together. It's got two shoulder guards, I would say, made out of wood to keep the heat from hitting your shoulder when firing this thing. Uh, you're about to see me struggle with a rocket because when we pull this rocket out, the springs on the wings are gonna fly out and it's gonna be crazy. So basically it would fire out like this all the way out. It would keep going. You'd see the fins spring out just like so and it would start to take off and now you would have to reload now to reload this is where the fun begins because these fins are a bear to get back in but once you do you're, you're pretty much good <laughs> we'll be right back so once you get your fins in there and lined up you just slide it all the way back lock it up with that notch right there Push it in, arm it, and there you go. That's it. Just a very, very cool piece of history. To aim it, I mean, you got three notches on the back rear end sight. Uh, low, medium, and high. Your guess is as good as mine when it comes to that. But the one thing that I would say that would hurt people the most besides the rocket is the back blast. Now, the back blast is obviously, this is a hollow tube the exhaust from the rocket would come out the backside, and most people, not knowing what to do, uh, would stand anywhere near that and get super hurt. There's been countless videos on that. More of the story, just don't. Don't stand in front of the end of an RPG. You know, I'm front end, back end. I wouldn't do it anyway, uh, and you'll be fine. So with that being said, our piece of gear that I would absolutely deem necessary is this. Now this is just a 5.56 because five, that's the most rifles that I have in my collection. Uh, it's a boar snake. Now, what's a boar snake you ask? Um, they, well, first of all, thank you for asking. That's very polite of you. Uh, this cleans your barrel out in no time whatsoever. Everyone is very familiar with cleaning rods i mean they've all the way back to like musket days they've used cleaning rods but modern technology allows us to use these boar snakes and it just makes it a little bit easier on the hands and it also gets it dare i say in my opinion more clean you don't have to run through patches down to make sure everything's fine you just put a little bit of oil a little bit of cleaner run it through your barrel and you're fine so let's take a look to see how this works all right, so to first prep, you would take your boar snake, and on this one, it's all self-contained, which is pretty nice. Picked it up at any sporting goods store near you. It should be relatively easy. You just gotta make sure you match the caliber up. Uh, but basically, you got this big 
fabric tail along with a wire brush and this long cord with a little bearing. So all you do is once you take out, you got a upper here just to make it easier on camera. Once you take out your bolt carrier group, cause you would be cleaning that too. You would slide down the string all the way through until it came out, slot it through just like that. And then once more, and here I'll actually put a little light on it. Ah, ah, there's a reason why I have this stuff. And you pull all the way through just like that until it comes apart. When you think, you yeah, know, that, that's pretty good. That's good and clean for the most part. You know, you don't have to go too nuts on this thing. You would unfold any sort of keeper. If it's got a keeper, I would recommend one that does. On this one, for example, you thread that through that big loop there. And then when you pull your brush through, that's where your brush is going to sit. You wrap around that fabric piece and then you wrap around the wire until it's all contained in there. Make sure there's no bumps or anything because you flip back that little plastic rubber piece. There you go. Now it's all self-contained. It's not going to spool out on you and you just put it in your range bag or anywhere that you keep your cleaning supplies. So. With that being said, I think this is a great piece of kit that everyone should use. Uh, this one in particular puts the caliber right there on the front so you know which one you're grabbing. Uh, I've seen them made for 9mm, for 5.56 as we just showed you. For all the common calibers that are being used today, they'll have one of these. So, I want to thank you again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I truly appreciate it. If you like this content, do me a favor, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and as always, remember these five rules. Never point your firearm at anything you don't intend on shooting. Know what is behind your target at all times. Be aware of your surroundings. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And of course, have fun. I'm Ryan Souls for Reload Revelation. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I appreciate it. Now do me a favor, get yourself one of these, ditch the old school, cleaning rods and go catch some R&R. &R.